This is John Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today I have another exciting episode for you, and this episode is because I got a big problem. Well, first off, actually, I don't like to look as look at problems as problems. I look to like to look at them as challenges and something I could overcome or hurdle, much like one of those little hurdles that those people in the track and field have to jump over, right? So I can overcome my problem today. My problem is this: all this leftover food scraps. I tend to eat a lot of fresh fruits in my diet, and besides growing your own greens and e eating vegetables, which are some of the most nutrient-dense foods on earth, the next class of uh, best things to eat, in my opinion, are the fresh fruits. So I eat a lot of fresh fruits, and unfortunately, that leaves me with a lot of fruit peels. And actually, this time of year, these are actually sweet lime peels, Oops. <laughs> and this time of year, it's citrus season, so I have a lot of citrus to compost. Now, normally, they don't recommend citrus composting citrus because it doesn't break down well but I like to compost it anyways and we'll talk more about that particularly in just a little bit. The challenge I'm having today is that I can't get rid of my compost fast enough and some of you guys might be thinking John just put out your garbage. Well no I don't want to waste good valuable food scraps and put in the garbage to go to the landfill that helps nobody. I want to use this to break it down into rich fertile soil so that I can enrich my garden and grow even healthier crops. But the challenge I'm having today is that I can't put all these food scraps into my compost bin because my compost bin broke. So actually, uh, let's head over to the compost bin and share the problem or challenge that I'm having. As you can see, this is my three sons. One, two, three are actually my three compost bins. We have a static compost bin here that basically doesn't work too well. And then I have a video actually where I built these two guys and actually... Uh, this barrel tumbler is working pretty good. It's actually quite full <laughs> and heavy. And uh, this one in the middle is actually the lifetime compost tumbler that I built and had a video about and check it out. The problem with this guy is, check it out, man. It's got so much compost in there, it just literally busted up and just broke open. So besides, uh, you know, smelling not too nice because it can't be working if it's all busted up, i got to contact the company and see if they're going to honor their five-year warranty on this unit you know I'm, I'm at a standstill for composting so I can't compost anymore because these barrels are full this one actually busted out and that one's full and uh, I need a solution so actually what happened was actually I went online and researched compost bins and you know I don't want this plastic stuff that's gonna break again I want to get a good composter that's gonna work and even work more effectively than these guys now yes this guy actually I got for free. My brother gave it to me because he won it, of all things. This guy I got at Costco for about 50 bucks. And if I had to do it again, I'd probably get another one for 50 bucks because 50 bucks is really cheap. Um, normally these sell for like 100 plus, and if I had to buy it for 100, uh, knowing what I know now that it, it, it broke, um, I probably wouldn't get one again. So I got online and started researching in-depth composters because, you know, I firmly believe that it's far better to buy, you know, a, a good product that's built well once, and even if you got to spend more, right, that's going to last a long time than to keep buying plastic crap that's going to break and you have to keep, keep replacing it because it's just a lot of headaches, you know, and I don't know, I'm going to have to empty this out and see what happened and then see if I could uh, make it right and get the parts if they're going to honor the warranty and all this stuff. So what I did is I got online and researched and I found the best composter, uh, you know, made out of metal. But one of the reasons why I chose this composter is not only is it made out of metal, but it's also insulated. It's insulated so that even in the cold weather, and it, yeah, it's not too cold here compared to where some of you guys are, you can compost when it's snowing outside in this composter because it's insulated. And this composter actually comes to us from Sweden. It was designed in Sweden. And so it's, uh, you know, it works in Sweden. If it'll work in Sweden, it'll work anywhere. So in this video, what we're going to do is actually we're going to go inside. I'm going to show you this brand new composter that just got shipped to me. I'm going to build and assemble it for you guys so you guys can see the process. And then I'm going to set it up and uh, start composting it and share my special tips and tricks so that you can get successful results composting in the hot summer or even in the snow. Now we're inside and you can see behind me I have two nice sized boxes. One weighs actually 52 pounds, the other one weighs about 35 pounds. And uh, the composter, my new composter, is contained within these two boxes. You can also see on the top here has a website www.joraform.se so that is the web website of the uh, manufacturer. They are located in Sweden. 
Uh, so, you know, this is a design unit in Sweden and works outside, yes, even during the winter time in Sweden. So if it'll work in Sweden, where I think it's colder than the U.S., except maybe for Alaska, it'll work wherever you live. So that's why I really like this product, because it's a little different than all the other composters that I've researched. You know, unlike my plastic ones that degraded and messed up, this one's actually going the uh, horizontal direction. So, you know, the barrel composter I have is like the vertical composter. I don't tend to like that kind. I learned that it just didn't really work so well. I like the ones that are the horizontal style. So, uh, you know, this is a horizontal style, but it's made out of galvanized metal, and it's also uh, powder coated. And in addition, it has insulation in there. And the insulation, I think, is the key to why this composter is good. Besides that, it's very high quality, unlike many of the other composters out there. This is probably the last composter you're going to buy. In any case, I guess without further ado, let's go ahead and open up these boxes and show you guys what's inside. And then I'll actually will uh, show you uh, how it is to assemble. I got my handy little razor here, and we're going to go ahead and open this guy up. All right. <laughs> it's double box, so I like that. Protect the contents on the inside. So it's all nice and wrapped up inside here and uh, padded bubble. That's really good. And here's the composter itself. You can see, man, this is like really nice construction. Powder coated metal. And on the inside, we've got basically uh, insulation. So this is what allows this composter to work even in the snow. The other thing besides letting this work in the snow, the other reason for the insulation, whether it's the summer or the winter time, it'll allow the compost inside this composter to uh, you know, reach 160 degrees, that's Fahrenheit, and that's an extremely hot temperature, and in, in, in that hot temperature, certain bacteria thrive in that, back, in that temperature, and will even you know, start eating the items or the things that they're composting inside the compost bin faster, so that means your compost will be done faster in this composter than say another composter. And guess what? When your compost turns over faster, that means you're generating more compost to feed your garden and uh, you know that's just gonna save you money in the long run because it's far cheaper to make your own compost, especially with food scraps that you would have normally threw out, than to buy new compost. I mean, some designer compost, and yes, they have designer compost out there. One cubic foot could cost like 10 bucks. That's insane, man. With this thing, it's actually the 270, the Joraform Composter 270. It can hold 270 liters of compost. That's about 70 gallons for, you, for us in the U.S., you know, of material to make a whole bunch of compost. Now, before I go on, I want to say that I ordered this composter from compostingwarehouse.com. They shipped it really fast, and I just had it within a few days. So I guess next I'm going to go ahead and unbox everything and uh, start assembling. So I got the first box uh, unpacked and that basically has all the insulated outer panels. So in this, it's probably the frame and some other parts. So let's check it out. Once again, this is double box, so I like that a lot. It's gonna protect the contents on the inside. Here we go, <laughs> more stuff. So uh, one of the cool things about this composter, unlike my other composters, those are just basically one single compost bin that you just gotta you know, work until it's done. So in that case, it might be really good to have two different ones. So you could actually fill up one composter uh, and let that finish. And while that's going, because once you got it full, it takes a while for it to compost down, then you're gonna fill a second bin and get that going. By the time your second bin's full, and then you can empty the first bin because that's going to be done. That's why I have two composters set up outside. With this one, it's a really smart design. This is like only one composter you'll need because in this composter, there's a little center section. So what this effectively does is it actually effectively uh, makes this into two smaller size composters so that you can compost in one half till it's completely full and fill it up. Then you fill up the other side till it's completely full. And by the time you're done filling up the other side, 
provided you're not generating too much waste. The first side will be done. You can empty out all the compost in the first side. And then you just repeat the process. So you can have a continual supply or never ending supply of compost as long as you always have some food scraps or other materials to put in this composter. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this out, take all these parts out, and then actually I'm going to go ahead and uh, go over the instructions and I'm going to start assembling my brand new Juraform composter. So now I got all the boxes unpacked and here are all the parts that I'm going to need except for two that are uh, I couldn't fit in the camera shot to assemble my Juraform composter. Now, you know, after looking over all these different parts, I could definitely say they're very high quality, especially compared to some of the other, you know, tumbling compost bins I've owned and assembled in the past. So I definitely like that a lot. One of the things is this manual is actually, uh, you know, uh, written in uh, Swedish and uh, using, uh, I don't know, uh, European English versus American English. Because it says on the front, tools, two pieces of spawner, 13 millimeter or two pieces of adjustable spawner, one spawner, 14 millimeter, and cross slotted screwdriver. What the hell is a spawner? Well, I looked it up on Google. Google's my best friend. Spawner is a wrench, and I kind of figured out it was a wrench, but I wasn't sure what kind of wrench. It was like a box end wrench or an open end wrench or, you know, an adjustable spawner. I guess it would be a, you know, a adjustable end wrench. So the regular 13 millimeter spawners are probably just like, regular box end. Actually, I got a few tools today, and these are all the tools you're gonna to need to assemble it, so it really doesn't take much. Got a flathead screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver, and a couple um, ratchets, Craftsman ratchets, really good. I got two of the 13 millimeter and one and a 14 uh, millimeter. So, I mean, that's rel relatively few tools. Now, the thing that I'm looking at now is that, you know, um, I put a cardboard piece of cardboard down, actually part of the cardboard box as a work surface. Because these are painted surfaces, these are actually powder coated surfaces. So you want to make sure, you know, if you're doing this on a sidewalk or concrete, you don't want to like scratch that against your nice painted surface, it'll kind of mess it up. So I put some cardboard down to protect my work surface and protect also the, uh, the nice paint here. So you can see I have all the different parts laid out here. <laughs> Mainly there's uh, all these parts that go around to make the tumbler. Two are not shown and a whole bunch of the other parts. The first step is to actually assemble the base and then once you got the base assembled, you're gonna assemble the uh, composter on top of the base. So uh, one of the things about the instructions, I mean, they're, they're adequate because they're full instructions. They could have a little bit more step-by-step -step with the wording, maybe done a little bit differently. But you know, I'll be able to figure it out. Here gives you a nice uh, page of English on how to, uh, you know, mount what to what. Although on each step I wish they had specific pictures showing what to do. But for those of you guys that can figure stuff out, it's not going to be an issue. Instead of actually going over the uh, written uh, letters and trying to figure everything out, I kind of like figuring out on my own. They do have an illustrated parts guide to show you all the different parts. So what I'm going to prefer to do is actually just take a look at the the picture here it just shows one two three four five six seven eight and it shows basically all the parts that go together where they go and I'll be able to just figure it out and do it with that without any you know reading the specific instructions what I'm going to do next actually I'm going to start a stopwatch and time how long it takes me to assemble I also may actually uh, bring you in and show you guys some of the different steps and some of the different parts and where I'm at and the time frame it has taken me to assemble this uh, Jorah Form 270 composter. Now I'm on uh, literally, uh, I think, step four of the assembly, and I got part of the structure assembled. And we actually have to sandwich the uh, insulation material here in between these two plastic sheets. Now, what this piece is, this actually acts as the divider, an insulated divider, in between the, the two uh, independent compost bins inside this whole composter. So this is the feature I really like because once again you can start one load of compost now and when that side's full then start the other load. So you can always have some compost, composting in your Juraform composter. We're about 30 minutes in and uh, you know I'm going to continue on working uh, diligently to get this thing built and we'll see how long it takes me. Now we're making some real progress. We got the frame assembled and we got this all set up. It's even rotating. Nice smooth action. 
nice and heavy duty on this main uh, center pull. I think that was another problem I had with my other uh, inexpensive ones. They use just uh, the standard cheap, like one of them, the barrel composter, use it, uses EMT conduit, which is not quite as strong as the stuff they're using on here. The other thing I noticed that I really like is actually they're using a plastic um, hardware, so the nuts and bolts here are plastic, so that means they will not rust and they won't uh, you know, go bad on you. And in addition, they're also using stainless steel hardware in places where they could have just used regular ones. But you know, that's just a testament to the high quality of this piece here. So next, all I have to do is actually just put on the sides here and uh, then we'll be all done. So it shouldn't take that much longer. And I'll be back at you when I'm all finished with this composter. So this guy is actually coming together. I'm making some good progress here. Got the good old Ryobi and I got it set on the lowest clutch setting. You definitely do not want to strip out these guys. Basically what I'm doing now is actually just screwing on the outer panels. Once again, this is powder coated metal. It's going to be durable and last you for many years to come. All I got to do is just uh, basically screw on each panel, go around, and pretty much I'll be done. All right. <laughs> I'm in the composter, so I'm almost done, but I want to take this opportunity to share with you like why this composter is really good in my opinion. So as you can see, I'm inside the composter and this is actually one of the doors and there's two chambers. I'm in chamber one and next door is chamber two. And you can see inside here, there's all this padding and this padding is the insulation. The insulation keeps this composter more warm than other composters on the market. Now, what's the benefit of doing that? Well, the main benefit is that there's going to be different bacteria in here munching on your compost. So in a standard compost pile, there's thermophilic bacteria, you know, and if it gets too hot, they're not going to survive. And the problem is most compost piles cannot have a sustained hot temperature because it's going to cool down. Depending on the temperature in your compost pile, different bacteria may be active. The thermophilic, the Cadillac of the composters that are going to compost your items faster so you're going to get even better and quicker results in the drawer form composter that I'm building. Well, in any case, I got to get back to building this and then we're going to go ahead and uh, share with you how long it took me to build it and then also we're going to set it up for you guys. This is the last screw that needs to go in my Jura Form 270 compost. So let's go ahead and put this in. So every panel you put in, I got to like push down and screw in at the same time. So it has been a little bit of a challenge, but hasn't been a big issue. And the thing that sucked and basically made my time take longer is that, as you can see, I'm using a manual screwdriver now because my Ryobi's battery wore out. So that kind of messed me up. So uh, after this uh, last screw is in, it probably will have taken me about uh, about an hour and a half to build this to build this composter. Now on the website it says it's about 60 minutes to build, and I guess that is obtainable if you read the directions. I just like to follow the pictures, so it took me a little bit longer. <laughs> Plus I would like to take my time on building things like this because once again, I mean, you build this thing once, it's going to be around for a long time. Solid metal. Alright, there's the last screw. Tighten it all up. This thing's quite solid. Nice and uh, hard. No major leaks, no major air seams or nothing. Everything looks nice and solid, especially when you look on the inside. It's nice and padded on the inside. We got the vent holes here. and Make sure you line up the vent holes so that actually, this actually vents instead of go to a piece of the uh, insulation on the inside. Let's see, uh, my comments on the assembly worked really well. All the pieces fit together perfectly unlike some of the stuff made in China where you you know got that furniture or whatever you assemble it and the holes don't line up everything lined up on this perfectly and uh, it was a pretty much a breeze to assemble it just took a little bit of time no major deal now the one comment I do have is that this was shipped to me and uh, a couple of the panels like actually I think is it no not that one the panel right here I don't know if you could see that on the video it's slightly bent. Now this is not going to affect the functionality of the composter working, but nonetheless when you're paying this kind of money for the composter, it is quite an annoyance. So they should definitely look into packing this better and uh, doing something with the corners because this one was majorly bent and I just took like a pliers and bent it back. And you can kind of see something happen, but it's not going to affect the functionality. 
but some of the other ones were minorly bent so this can be an issue and I have read some reviews online where other people have gotten this and it's been majorly damaged in shipping now I know it's a shipping carrier but the whole thing is I like to be proactive instead of reactive so if they maybe pack this better with more cardboard or different kind of way then it wouldn't have any issues like this but nonetheless I'm totally happy with the small little damage that I'll probably never notice again uh, once this is up and running and making good compost so even the best composter like the Joraform tumbling compost or 270 is not gonna work properly if you don't use it properly I built it properly but now we need to be able to set it up and use it properly so what I'm gonna do next I'm gonna go ahead and pull this guy outside in the cold weather set it up and then show you guys how to fill it properly and how to use this properly so that you can get the best results and turn it over compost in just about a month now we're outside got the composter all set up and before I go over this particular drawer form composter I want to talk about my experiences with my other three composters here so now I got a total of four composters here in the backyard so uh, let's go over and talk about them one by one and share with you guys the pros and cons of each one this is the first composter that I got and this is just a standard composter basically it's just it has a four plastic sides you put the stuff in and guess what compost happens even if you don't do anything but the main thing is you got to get your uh, nitrogen and carbon ratios right so you got to add the right amount of stuff so this is a Keter brand and uh, the latch on the front broke off and the latch on the back or the hinges broke off and uh, you know it hasn't been too functional for me in addition it kind of came apart and I have had this style composter where actually rats can actually uh, chew through the plastic to get the food on the inside so you know I don't really recommend this style composter they are relatively cheap if you want to do this style composter I'd actually recommend you get some chicken wire and just you know make a, a compost bin out of that or get some uh, free pallets and just uh, you know uh, make a compost bin out of that instead of buying some plastic thing like this so the next one, or the next two I got, is right here. The next two composters I got are tumbling composters, and in my opinion, these are way better than the uh, standard composter. The problem I had with this guy is that, you know, at a certain point, this center pole <laughs> dropped out of this, and I kept using it, and then guess what happened now? As you can see, it's totally busted up. So I guess that's what you get when you get plastic. Uh, I like these raised composters because, you know, uh, they're tumbling composters. They're going to work faster than your static pile, so you'll turn over your compost and make more compost quicker. You know, and compost, in my opinion, is essential nutrient and valuable asset to your garden. So uh, that's this guy here. I got to, I don't know, figure out what's going on with this. So uh, after this guy, or at the same time, I also got this guy, which is the barrel composter. This is also a tumbler, and I've learned after using the barrel composter, this gets actually quite heavy to uh, spin and turn. And I don't tend to like the uh, spinning composters that are going vertically like this. I like the horizontal axis. They are easier to fill and to use. So if you are using or want to make one of these, I'd make it the long direction instead of this direction. So because these uh, plastic composters got full and they weren't working fast enough, uh, you know, I got the next one, which I you saw me just build right here, and that's this guy right here. This is the Jura form, and now I got to actually stand up because this is actually at a height, a nice high level. So I like that I don't have to bend over as much as these other guys. And this also means when emptying your compost, you can just drive a wheelbarrow underneath here and you know open it up and just dump all your contents out. So the reason why I like the Jura form composter is mainly for three reasons. Number one, the insulation that you saw earlier when I was building it. This has the uh, polyethylene insulation, and the uh, polyethylene insulation will keep it warmer inside. Actually, it's a nice cold, windy day, and I actually a few degrees warmer on the inside. The polyethylene is the same material that they make these standard, you know, plastic bags. I always encourage you guys to get paper bags when shopping, if available. But if you got to get plastic, highly encourage you guys to actually recycle them. Places like Target stores <clears throat> or Walmart, you can actually take these and recycle them. They'll turn them into something else. Because if these just fly away, like, you know, in the air, <laughs> well, and see, that one's flying away now. <laughs> there it goes. Um, those things actually don't break down in nature. You know, they'll be in the landfill for, I don't know, probably millennia. And, you know, that's the same stuff in here. So don't worry, this stuff is not going to break down inside the composter. It will keep your compost warm. So like that the insulation feature is going to keep things warmer, which is going to allow the compost 
uh, pile to happen more effectively. Second thing I like, nice metal construction. This is definitely heavy duty construction compared to the other plastic ones and I'm highly confident after assembling this, this one's not gonna come apart like this one did. Cause I mean, this pole is one solid pole that's not going anywhere. So uh, you're not gonna have any problems with this. The third reason why I like this is that because it is raised up, it's also rodent proof. It's rodent proof and I'm not gonna have any problems with rodents. And uh, finally, I like that it's a two bin system. So over here to have a two bin system, I literally had to have two bins where I'd fill up this one first and let that work. And then while that one's working, I'm filling up this one. And then by the time this one's full, then that one will be finished. And then I could keep swapping back between them. With the uh, Jorah form, you actually have two bins so that you could just, uh, you know, fill this one up when that's full. Then you go to that one and go back and forth. So you could have a continual supply of compost. And especially for me, that's very important because of all the gardening I do, but more importantly because of all the waste and compost and food scraps and garden clippings that I generate. For that reason, I like the drawer form. I mean, it's the best composter that I've found to date. I mean, it's solid construction designed in Sweden, works in the snow. Man, it's really cool. So even if you have the best composter like the drawer form, if you don't use it properly, and this goes with any composter or any compost pile even, if you don't use it properly, it's not gonna work for you. So let me go ahead and share with you guys how to use this properly. Basically, you need to mix your, your greens and your browns. So uh, let's get right to it. So now you can see some of the food waste I've been generating and some of the garden clippings. You're like, John, what the heck are you eating, man? <laughs> Looks like a porcupine. Well, this is not a porcupine. This is actually the shell or the, uh, not necessarily the shell, but the rind of the fruit I was eating actually called jackfruit. It's actually quite delicious. And yes, you can compost these guys and it'll be interesting to see how these little seeds compost because <laughs> they're actually quite hard. The other thing you'll notice is that I do have a lot of orange peels. I like to eat seasonally and I have a lot of orange and uh, sweet lime and tangerine peels right now because I'm eating a lot of citrus here in January. And uh, you might be thinking to yourself, John, wait, you're not supposed to compost citrus peels. But guess what? In the drawer form, uh, compost or do the insulation in the higher heat temperatures, it'll break down things like the citrus peels. They even say it'll break down things like, you know, fish bones, and you can even put bones in there. The bones will be wiped clean, and then you'll take out full bones due to the bacterial action. So, you know, because this composter has the insulation, it adds a whole new dimension of composting that you are not able to access, including composting things that you normally wouldn't be able, and also have a faster turnaround time. So I like that a lot. So besides just these wastes, which is the kitchen scraps, which is the source of the nitrogen, or the greens in the composter, which we need. We also need the browns, you know. One of my challenges is that I have a whole lot of, uh, you know, uh, food scraps and food wastes, which are the greens, but I don't have enough browns. The browns are things like, you know, paper and wood chips and sawdust and stuff like that. And you, have a, you need to have a nice balance or else your compost is really not going to work effectively. So I want to be able to ramp that up. Uh, so how am I going to do that? Well, you know, in previous episodes I've uh, mentioned you could add like something like a shredded newspaper. I actually take paper bags and shred those up so we could add some of this stuff in there. But you know, this stuff is really light and there's not a lot of, uh, you know, uh, matter to it. You know, the, the goal is to add, you know, equal weights of carbon to nitrogen. So if you add two pounds of the paper scraps, you're going to want to add two pounds of the, the food wastes. But this stuff hardly weighs anything, and it's best to shred this stuff up so it will, uh, you know, compost optimally. So because the uh, carbon waste has been such an issue, depending on where you live, you know, you may have access to leaves or other things, but that may work. But for me in the city here, it can be kind of challenging to get something that's going to be able to add the carbon to my pile besides the, uh, you know, a shredded paper. So what I found instead were these guys right here. Ugh! <laughs> these guys are 100% uh, pellets. Now this is actually used as a horse bedding for uh, you know horses. It's basically pine pellets that are compressed pine sawdust and compressed under high pressure with no additives. 100% pine. I did contact the manufacturer to uh, verify this information. And it's very important you get the uh, horse bedding because on horse bedding they're not going to add crap to it. You know if you get these pine pellets or you know uh, wood stove pellets they might be adding stuff to it so you want to definitely check your sources of that but by adding these guys this will give your carbon 
uh, to your pile that it needs to work optimally. And because these are compressed, you don't need to add that much. So you want to add about 10% of the pellets to you know your food wastes, so it'll you know compost properly. And the amazing thing is that these pellets at the local feed store here, they're about seven dollars, and this, this bag's about 40 pounds. So this bag will definitely last me a while to allow me to make more compost in my composter. It's very important when adding things to your composter to have the right recipe. So you got to add the carbon and the nitrogen. The easy way to do that is to once again use equal parts of you know by weight of carbon, whether they're you know paper or you know sawdust or leaves uh, to the same amount of weight as carbon. Now I know for you techies out there that's John that's not the right ratio the optimal ratio well that's absolutely correct but I want to make it easy for you guys and if you use that ratio you can get far better results than not adding enough carbon which is in my opinion what most people do especially if you're generating a lot of food waste. The easier way to do that is to use the uh, pellets there and just add 10% of the pellets because the pellets are compacted they'll expand when your compost is wet like many of the compost that I'm adding today. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and add in our wastes and you can see here we got the oranges and I like that these guys open up and we just literally dump these guys in and check it out. Dump it in there. All my food waste. And the cool thing is to get my 10% of the pellets instead of just adding them I add the pellets to the bottom of my five gallon bucket, you know, just about 10% worth of a bucket. And then when the food gets in there, it soaks up the extra moisture so that it doesn't mess up my bucket, make it all nasty and rank. And also it's in there when I dump it, so it makes mixing really easy. So there's some of the food scraps and the pine pellets. And uh, the cool thing about this compost is that you could fill it up like 90% full. So we got a ways to go. That was one five gallon bucket. Let's uh, keep going. Now besides the food scraps, also got some yard clippings. So we got some tree collared leaves and things from my garden that I pulled up. Now it's very important to use all the resources on your site, whether they're food scrap resources or garden clippings. I mean, this is like high quality chit right here, man. This is grown in rock dust minerals and has all the nutrients that the plants pulled out of the soil. But now we're going to actually put this back in our compost pile so that we could continually enrich and rebuild our soil. So let's go ahead and put this stuff in here. Oh man, and this looks like the optimal size container to use to uh, fill up the drawer form because it fits perfectly. This is just a square, I believe, five gallon bucket. My brother gave it to me when he had a cat called Scoop Away. <laughs> so we got that in there now. Looks like we're maybe about, uh, I don't know, almost halfway full. Let's uh, keep adding some stuff. Next, we got some jackfruit peel. So it's best to uh, you know cut up the jackfruit peel or tear it up into smaller pieces, and that's going to allow it to work faster. But we're just going to dump it in whole and see what the heck happens. Oh, and check it out. Got a lot of <laughs> cactus fruit peels, too. This is all the food scraps I've been eating for the last couple days. I've been saving them. Got more room. We're going to add more food scraps. Once again, more citrus. So uh, this will be interesting to see how this does. And of course, besides citrus, we got other things in there. We got some napkins and some greens and mango skins and all kinds of stuff. And as you can see, I had my pre-mix in there. Had the uh, pellets in the bottom. All right, makes cleaning up a lot easier. So I mean, this is pretty full now. We're getting pretty good. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and close this up. But before I do, I want to talk about compost activators. You know, at the garden store, your local nursery, they sell little compost activators. And you know, in my opinion, that stuff's a waste of money. You don't need it. You know, it, while it may help your compost, and it's probably not going to hurt it, I think there's a far better compost activator that you already have in your garden. Guess what it is? It's old compost. So here's some compost from my garden. And uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to add like a little one gallon pot into the bin and guess what this is going to inoculate the compost with the bacteria that's going to start breaking this stuff down so that you'll be able to have compost sooner instead of later besides the compost there's one last thing that i highly encourage you guys add that'll make your compost work even better and actually uh make the comp the end result even better too and that's this stuff right here this is the rock dust or azomite we're going to go ahead and sprinkle that in got a little small cup here 
Now what this is going to do, this is going to add the trace minerals to your pile so that when your compost comes out, it has, it's pre-inoculated with the trace minerals, but this stuff will also make the bacteria go crazy. They love the rock dust and the trace minerals it provides. You know, I want to feed the compost and give it everything it needs to have the best possible results. I mean, like us, if we eat junk food, we're probably not going to be so healthy, but if you eat fresh fruit out of your garden, you're going to be healthy. So eat the right things and you could be healthy, but guess what? Feed your compost pile the right ratios and the right stuff, and it's going to be healthy and work for you too. So now we get to go ahead and close this up, lock it up. And I like that this guy has actually locking uh, metal brackets to lock the door shut. It's nice and solid here. And, you know, if you're scared about somebody stealing your compost, you can put a lock on it. This may be especially good if you're in an apartment complex and you got them people that come and steal your compost at night. All right, so once you got it full, you just rotate it. And one of the things I like is that every other side has a handle on it. So you can easily turn this, and this is nice and heavy duty. So now, because it is full, all I need to do is come out once a day and just give it a spin. And in just as short as about a month or a month and a half, you'll have some rich compost. So let's see here. We're going to go ahead and uh, we spun that a little bit, and let's see how well mixed it looks. All right, so there it is. As you can see, I even got dryer lint in there, but everything's mixed. I got the greens and a whole bunch of citrus, and uh, you know, I could probably even add a little more stuff. So let's actually add some newspaper. Close it up, we'll spin it up. <laughs> All right, I really like the height on this, so I don't have to bend, and I really like the handle. Some of the other problems with the other compost that I have is it doesn't have easy handles that makes turning a breeze. So with this one it is, and it's all metal on metal, spins really nice and easily. So I, I guess that's pretty much it for this episode, you know, building my brand new composter. I'm quite happy I chose the Jora Form 270 composter. It's definitely heavy duty. And whether in, in the wind, cold, snow, or the heat in the middle of summer, this guy's going to keep your compost warmer so that it happens faster and you can enrich your garden that much sooner. But be sure to stay tuned for future episodes where I'm going to do, you know, comparisons on how this is working over time and give you guys the updates. But so far, so good. This is probably the most heavy-duty composter that I've found to date. So I want to give you guys a quick update on the... Jora form composter check it out my compost is a brewing and check it out man look at all that heat coming out of there and these this stuff only after a week and man it's a cold day it's nice to put my hands in there this guy is probably running about 150 degrees I'm gonna soon have a compost thermometer show you guys how that works and how hot this temperature gets but man this is really nice on a cold day to warm up <laughs> imagine like sitting in front of your compost pile instead of the fire so, you know, I've had a really good success with this so far. Be sure to stay tuned for future updates on my Joraform composter and how it's working. And before I go, I want to let you guys know that I've negotiated a special deal on these guys for you. These guys normally retail out at $389, and that's a lot of money for a composter, absolutely. But what I can tell you after building it and using it, this by far is the best composter that I've ever experienced and used. I mean, this is how all composters should be built out of metal, insulated, I mean it just works good as long as you fill it appropriately and with the proper mixture that I show in this video. So I scoured the internet for a couple hours trying to find the best price and you know I found a bunch of places selling the unit for $369 including shipping and that in itself is a good deal because this guy is I think like 80 pounds between the two boxes and shipping to some parts of the US can cost a lot of money. So what I have done is I've negotiated with the Boogie Brew people, the good old people at Boogie Brew that have given you many deals in the past. They're now going to be offering this composter for the lowest delivered price that I found. Plus, they're going to include a sample of their compost tea. So you can now make your own compost, brew your own compost tea, and you're going to have some of the best garden soil in the world. So to get this deal, be sure to check the link below. It's uh, boogiebrew.net slash gyg they're gonna have a special page uh, with a special delivered low price to the US 48 states I recommend you guys get the 270 model that's the model I have here they do have a smaller model that's you know just a little bit less money I wouldn't really recommend that model and if you want to move up they have a 400 model that's even larger but what I'd recommend is actually buying two of the 270s instead of the larger 400 because two of the 270s is gonna hold more capacity than the 400 model and also actually be approximately the same price. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy this episode of learning about my brand new composter. 
I'm excited to be using it and generating some compost really quick style now. Once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time. And remember, keep on growing.